The Wisconsin Department of Transportation is developing a new specification for stay-in-place highway bridge deck forms that will lower bridge construction costs and increase worker safety. Building a concrete bridge deck typically requires constructing temporary wooden shoring or formwork to provide a foundation for the concrete slab as it hardens. Wisconsin is making increased use of wide flange concrete girders due to their durability and long life. The close spacing of these girders makes this wooden formwork more difficult to install. And this process is a time consuming and also an expensive process to build this plywood formwork before you pour the concrete. And then after the concrete is hardened after a couple of days, it's also a complicated and expensive and actually dangerous process to remove this wooden formwork from underneath the hardened concrete. Some contractors, with WizDOT approval, were already investigating and making limited use of alternative methods to support wet concrete. Non-metallic, stay-in-place formwork makes use of less expensive, off-the-shelf materials that become a permanent part of the bridge. The Wisconsin Highway Research Program initiated a study to test these materials and develop standard specifications for their use. The amount of testing that we did for the study involved about six to ten different types of materials and it also involved about four to five different types of tests and these tests were developed to come up with the criteria one and in just including loading of the weight of the concrete the other would be the impact test to drop this 50 pound uh, impact onto this and see how well it performed essentially were tests to determine whether or not the panels that were produced using all of these different systems could resist the weight of the wet concrete when it was poured on it, but more importantly could resist the weight of a construction worker essentially jumping up and down on these when they were constructing the bridge. So a lot of the testing was related to how much impact load the, the slabs could take, the panels, and how many repeats you could do. Because for instance, you might jump on it once and it didn't break, but then the second guy comes along and jumps on it and he goes you know, down to the bottom of the bridge. The results of these tests provided information on the strength, serviceability, and behavior under accidental impact loads of these stay-in-place forms. A few products in particular performed exceptionally well. One of the results of the study that we got immediately was that we were using a certain type of precast form in place and that failed miserably and, and, and with that we immediately stopped using that type of precast form. We will be going forward with putting those into our bridge manual, these three or four different types that, that passed well. But another big benefit is we'll also put into our, our bridge manual for future bridges, here's the criteria. If you can find a material that actually passes this criteria, then we'll also allow this on the list and allow us to use these on bridges. And we're hoping this will happen in the next year or two, that we'll build a bridge using a number of these different systems and then to be able to compare the labor, the constructability, what it takes to put these in place, and also the costs to produce them. This study established a standard for stay-in-place bridge formwork that will allow bridges to be built more quickly, decrease the cost of construction, and make construction workers safer.